Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden and wishing you a happy spring. Um, this is our first video that we've made in spring. I think our last upload um, we filmed just at the end of winter so it's really lovely to be filming for you in spring and the days are really nice and long now. Um, it's about half six at the moment and it's still light outside which is amazing. I feel very energised and ready to crack on with things. Um, wanted to show you around today because we've got so much going on it feels like very suddenly everything's come back to life um, the daffodils are all appearing now as you can see behind me um, and I think that's the highlight at the moment so I really wanted to show you those um, so you can see in the orchard behind me we've got two types of daffodil the pale one is called ice follies um, and there's a mystery yellow one as well so if you know what that's called do let us know um, we were under the impression that it was february gold because that's what we bought in the garden center but it's been flowering much later than february it's the end of march now um, so who knows what that one is but um, my intention with this area now is to have kind of pale colours. I'm not sure if I like the yellows or not, but I do think it's good to have a mix, so I'm really not sure what to do about it. But I love seeing all of this colour this time of year. We've got lots of primroses popping up as well. And my strategy with the orchard, because it's a very overgrown area, is um, in the autumn, I go out there and try and clear some of the ivy and the brambles from the ground, which there's a lot of. And then as a reward, I plant a clump of daffodils. So you can see there's probably about seven or eight clumps there now. Um, and those are the ones that I rewarded myself with after I'd cleared some of the ground. But if you do look closely, it still needs a lot of work on it. And it's something that I would really, really like to work on this year, um, especially now that we've got some of our other bigger projects sorted. Um, I actually will have time, hopefully, to work on the orchard this year. So I thought we'd start there. Our veg garden's looking really amazing too. We've got this huge rhubarb, which seems to have appeared out of nowhere. Um, I'm sure it wasn't there yesterday and now it's absolutely massive. Um, we've got our asparagus just appearing out of the soil. Um, that's an early variety um, and we just noticed that today. So hopefully it won't be long until we can harvest some asparagus because that's one of my favourite things to grow in the garden. Uh, we love making a risotto with that. Um, but you can see next to me as well, our onions are doing really well. Um, perennial kale's recovered from the frost damage, which is really good. Um, and then the, we've got two beds of daffodils on either side of the veg garden that are looking really lovely as well, but they're not quite ready to flower. Um, and those two beds I just grow for um, putting the flowers in vases and bringing them into the house rather than in the orchard where I do leave the flowers there for the pollinators. Um, and one thing I learned while I was reading about daffodils is apparently these hybrids that we grow for cutting are useless to pollinators and the advice was to grow some of the native species of daffodil. So I did add some, um, but I have seen today that these, um, the flowers that we do have up there are popular with the pollinators and I've seen loads of bees in them. So I'm confused about that advice. If you know anything about it, um, feel free to share because I would love to know more about that. And uh, I think it's really good building up a garden that keeps pollinators in mind, but it's quite tricky when you get your advice online. There always seems to be some debate about things and until you try it for yourself, you don't really know what's going to happen. But I think that's everything from the veg garden. Um, just lots more to look forward to here. We've got broad beans coming up as well. Um, so check back in a couple of weeks time and hopefully there'll be more to show you up here. Now I'll go and show you the rest of the garden. So I thought I'd stop here and just show you that our crocuses have gone over and this is an example of um, what they should look like after they finished flowering. So we let the leaves grow really long and I think it does look quite messy but that's kind of the trade-off and for me it feels really worth it having those early flowers in the garden. Um, but we like to let them grow really long and then the leaves can feed the bulb and then we'll get um, good patches of them for next year. I literally just looked down and saw that there is rabbit damage up here so perhaps it's only a matter of time until these get eaten too. Um, but the crocuses at the bottom of the garden have all had the tops cleaned off and they'd look very different to this so I'm just hoping that those will be okay um, and that next year we will get more flowers but I probably will plant some more just to be on the safe side. You can also see we've got loads of tulips popping up in these beds which I'm really really looking forward to. Um, some of them are flowering already so the ones that I have left in for about three years are flowering at the moment and they're those um, very bright red ones um, and I said this last year I don't really like the colour and I get stuck every year on whether I should pull them out um, because they are so reliable and every year they come back and they're such a good size and there's hundreds of them um, so that's the reason for leaving them in but I just don't like the colour so I think this year you guys can hold me accountable I really should pull them out and replace them with something that I like more in autumn but beyond those I have added some more so I've got um, a tulip called design impression um, and that one flowers and returns every year for us we do have some that we've had in the ground for a couple of years and they are huge and every year they come back and it's 
like their full size. I know a lot of people say when you um, try to get tulips to perennialize, they come back a bit smaller and a bit leafier, but these ones don't seem to for us, which is really good. So I added another couple of hundred of those um, and you can see them popping up and a lot of them have got heads on them already. So I think they should be flowering maybe next week, um, not long at all. So it'd be really good to see those. And just in general, it's really nice to see the new growth on everything. So if you look at this rose that I've been training on a kind of tripod structure, I love seeing the new growth on the roses. It's so exciting and so much promise. Um, and the same with the oriental poppies they look really good and it's just a time when there's a lot of excitement in the garden and you know there's good things to come but we're not far enough into the year that things have started going wrong either so it feels like it's a time that's really really promising and hopeful so I think this is just such a good time in the garden one thing that I do like to do this time of year is just keep notes on how my bulbs did and if there was anything that I want to improve on. So I know last time I told you um, I'd quite like to add some purple crocuses to this area. So I've just got that on my notepad so that when it comes to autumn, I don't feel overwhelmed with trying to remember how everything was doing because I've got a note um, describing how it all went. So that's something that really helps me. And um, if you're interested in kind of trying to get a bit more on top of a plan for your garden, it's something that I'd really recommend doing as well. But that's more or less the full extent of um, how I plan for things. I'm very ad hoc otherwise, and I kind of just sow seeds, stick them in the greenhouse and hope for the best. Um, maybe over the years I'll get better at planning things, but for the moment I plan my bulbs meticulously and then everything else is ad hoc because it just depends on how much time I've got. Um, so next I'm gonna show you the mini meadow. So here is our mini meadow and although it's not quite in flower yet, I just wanted to stop here and show you it because there's a lot of um, promise. Basically, we decided to stop mowing the lawn um, as often as usual a couple of years ago. And since doing that, we've noticed things like primroses have spread absolutely everywhere. So in this area in particular, where we mow the least, we've got so many primroses and they're really pretty, but also you see a lot of bees around here, which is super lovely. Um, so my plan with this area is to keep adding things to it. Um, I'll keep adding spring flowering bulbs and we'll continue to let the grass grow long and not mow it very often. Um, and then things should spread and it should become, in essence, a small wildflower meadow. So what you can see at the moment are we've got these daffodils and I think these are called Pablo. Um, I added them the year before last. And then we've got primroses, which do spread by themselves. But if there's a particularly big clump, then I do dig them up and divide them and dot them around just to get them moving around the garden a bit faster so that they don't spread in one area. Last autumn, I added about 50 snakes head fritillaries to this area. Um, they should be a mix of purple and white, but so far I can only see purple. And we're a little bit early to see those um, properly, but they're getting ready to open up now. And they've sent the flowers up. We're just waiting for them to open up like tiny little lanterns. Um, um, but even though they haven't flowered yet, I know that's one that I'm really, really loving and I will definitely add some more of those this autumn because they're just so pretty and dainty. Um, and I think I will also add a few more maybe anemones to this area. Um, so that's woodland anemones. And I have added some under the oak tree. Again, it's a little bit early to see those, um, but I'm really looking forward to those flowering. And then after this kind of um, spring carpet of flowers, we let the grass grow really long and we get cow parsley, um, which is again, really, really good for the pollinators. And I will probably add some later flowering things to go in here with the cow parsley, but I haven't decided what yet. So that's something I need to decide before autumn. Um, maybe some camassia or even some oriental poppies I think might be nice but um, let me know if you have any ideas on what to add to this area. Um, I can see even now there's bluebells popping up here and I definitely haven't planted blue bluebells so they've made their way here somehow but that's the really lovely thing about not mowing the lawn is you get all of these surprises and it just gets better every year. Um, so stay tuned and we will come back here next week or whenever we're next filming and you can see how this looks and hopefully see those snakes head fritillaries. I've also been working on something new which I'm going to show you now. So in front of me here, you can see our tulip patch, which is coming along really well. Um, there's not many flower heads on here yet. I can see one or two, but it shouldn't be long until these get bigger and give us some more flowers. And I'm quite, I'm quite pleased that it's staggered from the um, tulips in the other bed because it means we'll have a longer season. Um, so this is my cutting patch. So I grow these ones to, in theory, bring into the house, but they almost never make it in because I think they look so nice in the garden. Um, I bring them in when they're very close to going over. Um, and this year I put a bit more effort into this bed because last time I just bought loads of cheap bulbs from B&Q in the sale, didn't really care about 
didn't really care too much about what they were. And then come spring, I hated the way it looked. They were kind of all different colors, some really hot, bright colors that I don't like, lots of different heights and flowering times. I just didn't like it. So this year I've chosen varieties that are all quite compact, double petaled and soft pastel colors and spent a little bit more money on them as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing these and I hope they're better than last spring's. And then behind me is something that I've been working on for more or less three years. So we moved in um, three and a half years ago and this bed was completely full of bamboo um, and it just went absolutely everywhere. It was in the beds here as well. And the first thing we had to work on in the garden was taking it out. Um, and it was the running kind of bamboo. So it would send these really long roots and then another plant would fire up just as you felt like you've dug out the first one. So it took us a really long time to get on top of it. And uh, we are still going, but um, I'm on top of this area now. So this bit we decided, because it was in quite a small bed, we'd cut it down, smother it with a tarp for three years. And then maybe twice a year, we'd lift up the tarp, trim it back down, cover it again, to remove the light from it and finally it killed it off so I came out here yesterday um, in the rain and dug the plant out and all the roots are gone now which was really hard work because the roots are really tough um, but finally I am ready to plant something new in this bed so I'd love to know if you have any ideas of what to put here um, I'm thinking so far I'd quite like to put some Japanese anemones there because I really love the view when you're sat on top of this hill and you can look over this bed and see the house and you can see the crocuses in spring um, so I don't want something that's going to obscure the view all the time maybe a perennial that will die back in the winter and then gradually kind of get taller and give us some flowers. And it is dappled um, shade as well, because we've got this um, plum tree that hangs over the top of it. So it doesn't get an awful lot of light in the summer, whereas it does in the spring. Um, so if you have any ideas of what to put there, I really liked the suggestion of doing a herb garden as well. And that's got me thinking, um, and I'm not exactly sure what to do, but um, I think I'd really like to put some Japanese anemones in, possibly the one called wild swan, which is a really nice purple and white. Uh, we'll see what the garden centre have and uh, if you guys have got any ideas as well, I'd love to hear those. But it feels really, really good to finally be getting on top of these things that we started years ago and getting rid of that bamboo really felt like an endless battle and I didn't think we'd ever get on top of it. So it would be a really good reward to get something in there. And I love the way that if, if it's something that flowers, it will kind of frame the cottage and this view down the garden too. But next I'm going to show you my seedlings because um, that's another kind of hopeful thing that's happening in the garden at the moment. So here is our small greenhouse and this is where I keep my seedlings and things that I've overwintered. And it's the only greenhouse that I haven't cleaned this year and I think it shows. <laughs> um, but I probably won't clean it because I just really can't be bothered. There's other things that I want to be spending my time on now, but it does desperately need it. Um, so we'll see, but probably not this year. The shelf's full, so I really need to do a reorganise. I've got some new things in here. So I've got my peas, um, I've got my cauliflowers, um, and these are Romanesco cauliflowers. So they're the really lovely green ones that are in a kind of spiral shape. Can't wait to grow those. Um, these are my cup and saucer plants, which I sowed end of January, I think, but they're really, really big. Um, I think I sowed a few too many as well because I only want two plants, so I'll probably be giving some of those to friends and family. But it's good to know that they're doing well and it's something I'm really looking forward to growing because I haven't grown them before. I've also got loads of things in here that I've taken from cuttings or things that I sowed last year and needed to overwinter. So I've got some hollyhocks here that I grew from seed last year, but they weren't quite big enough to get them out in the garden. Those are looking really good. I've also got, um, these are called sneezewort, I think. Um, I bought them from a plant sale at Great Chalfield Manor last summer, um, and I took loads of cuttings from them. And the cuttings have done amazingly. Um, I think I must have about 15 cuttings, so I'll, I'm really looking forward to getting those in the garden this year, hopefully get some flowers from them. Um, got some hydrangeas that I took from cuttings. Those have survived, luckily. Um, I haven't had 100% success with my cuttings, but I think that's a pretty good um, amount compared to how much I tried. Um, my sweet peas are really looking dead. I will probably start again with these. Um, I don't know where I went wrong. I think I definitely overwatered them. Um, I sowed them autumn last year and I tried to overwinter them, but I think it's just been so, so cold. Um, maybe that was a problem. Either way, they just look like um, they're not going to make it. I think maybe there's three <laughs> that will survive. Um, so I might try and hang on to those three, but I definitely will start sweet peas again. I've got some Jerusalem artichokes in here that were kindly given to me by my mother-in-law. I'm um, going to try and get those in pots and get them started so that I can move them into the veg garden um, when there's space. 
Um, so I definitely need to have a reshuffle with my seedlings because this area is completely full. Um, what I will probably do is move some things into the polytunnel, especially the ones that can cope with the colder nights. Um, so the things like the cauliflower and the, probably the peas will be fine. Um, I won't quite bring in my tender seedlings. So I've got tomatoes, aubergines, cucumbers in the house. I think they'll probably stay there for another month just until the nights get a bit warmer because we are still having about four degrees Celsius at night, which is just too cold for them. Um, but I definitely need to have a big reshuffle. So I think that's something that I'll try and do this week and just get on top of this area a bit more. But I think it's so nice coming out here and looking at these and just thinking about what you're going to be growing um, over the summer and just feeling that excitement and wanting to get going. But let's head down the garden and I've got a few more things to show you. And the last thing I wanted to show you before the sun sets is this part of the garden. We've got some really, really lovely um, blossom on the plum trees at the moment and um, some blossom on the quince tree as well, which is a really lovely red colour um, and just lots of signs of spring and signs of um, flowers and lots of good things to come. I have also been working on dividing the snowdrops in this area. So I had a really big clump that I lifted and managed to divide into about 15 smaller clumps. And I've dotted those around in the hope that we'll get some more um, flowers next winter, because that's something that I want to work on over the years. But I think it's going to be quite a long process because the bulbs are quite expensive. We've also got loads of bluebells popping up in this area. Um, they are the invasive kind, so they're the Spanish bluebell. And basically I tried to dig them out last year or the year before. And while I was doing that, I ended up moving the bulbs. So they've kind of got a wider coverage now and then they've multiplied and now there's more than there were in the first place. So I'm definitely gonna just leave them because um, I can't get on top of it and they spread really well. The pollinators do like them and I don't think we have any um, of our native English bluebells here anyway for them to compete with. So I decided to embrace those. And you can also see below me um, how the crocuses have been eaten by the rabbit, um, which is a shame. They are starting to grow back, but the rabbit just comes back and eats them all. So I think I will add some in autumn just to be on the safe side um, because they are my favourite thing to grow in the garden. And I just want to make sure that we've definitely got lots of them next year. Um, and keep your fingers crossed for us that the rabbit doesn't end up multiplying as well, because I know that's something that can happen. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed having a look around the garden today and happy spring. Um, and remember, if you'd like to watch our garden develop over the months and years to give us a subscribe and we'll see you next time.